Hey guys, this is something that's been requested a lot since I only started doing videos around Opus 3. Um, Opus 1 has a lot of good like fundamental mechanics and a lot of like general rules and things like that. So this is a great one for like anyone really. Um, it's especially good though for newer players or players that aren't as confident with um, the rules in general and the reasons behind certain mechanics. So um, yeah, I'll jump straight into it. Auron triggers even if you have five backups in play. Um, obviously, when it resolves, if you have five backups in play, then you won't be able to play one because that's illegal. But if you were to trigger his ability and in response break one of your backups, like Tele for example, then when he resolves you will be able to play your fifth backup again because that slot's now open. Uh, Warrior of Light is a damage modifier. Now damage modifiers, they all apply before Minwood checks them and they actually they, they change the amount of damage being dealt. Uh, so. If Warrior of Light battles an 8k 4 cost, for example, while well, that uh, 4 cost has Minwoo behind it, uh, Warrior of Light will still deal the 10k to it and break it because it changes the damage that's being dealt. It doesn't like do 5k first and then double it. It just does a straight up 10k damage to that forward. And then Minwoo sees 10k is greater than 8k and so it won't block it. At uh, Firion, this is generic CP mechanics. Those first two abilities, that both cost one CP, you cannot discard one card to pay for both of them at the same time because they're separate abilities, so you have to activate them separately, which means you have to pay for them separately. And there's no floating CP in this game, so once if you discard a card to pay for one of them, then the extra CP disappears because you've already paid for it, and then when you go to pay for the next one, you have to generate some more CP somehow. Uh, Lan. Once the block has been declared, it doesn't matter what the power changes to for the other forward. So if Lion gets blocked by a forward that's currently weaker than him, but then in response to the block, that forward gets bigger, uh, Lion will still have to battle it. Uh, Shiver, this is generic targeting mechanics, because it just says choose one forward. That forward doesn't have to be active. So you can target a dull forward with Shiver, and it will still freeze it. Terra's magic charge is very interesting. Firstly, it affects her ability damage as well as her combat damage. Secondly, it actually grants her an additional field ability. So it actually, the dub, dealing double damage becomes a field ability on that copy of Terra. So if she is no longer in play when one of her abilities resolves, then that ability won't deal double damage even if you'd used magic charge that turn because that's an ability of the Terra. So if the Terra is not in play, then the ability is inactive. Uh, thirdly, it does stack. So you could use Magic Charge twice in the same turn, and then her abilities will be dealing quadruple the damage. Lastly, now just trust me on this one, I won't go into detail in this video, but if you intend to use her Magic Charge with her Enter ability, so you intend to deal 8k to 2 dull things instead of 4, then stack that yourself before asking your opponent for a response. So you would play her, trigger her auto ability, then say I'm stacking Magic Charge. Now Time Age has to be used preemptively. What I mean is, if a forward's already declared an attack, then using Time Age on that forward won't stop the attack that's already happening. Now there is a step during a combat phase called attack preparation, which is be just before attacks are declared, and you can use Time Age during that time, although you won't know which forward is about to attack at that time. Now Hades is generic targeting mechanics again, but this card has two targets. Now for an effect to fizzle, all of the targets have to be illegal when it resolves. So if just one of Hades' targets becomes illegal, for example, gets removed from the field, then it will still affect the other target and also still force the discard. But if both targets become illegal, so both aren't there anymore when it tries to resolve, then they won't have to discard because the whole effect will fizzle. Now Summoner I just put in here because there are very few backups like this currently. It has an action ability that doesn't require dulling itself for the cost. So that means you can use it the turn it enters, it doesn't have summoning sickness. Secondly, if you can use it even if summoner itself is dull, you can just pay the ICP with a different um, backup or discard a card if you need to. Um, although if summoner is active, you can of course pay that one ICP with itself still, you still have that option. Uh, Leon, the character they get to play from their hand is free, they don't have to pay the cost for that character. Now Aerith, in this game, Making a character untargetable in response to a targeting effect will prevent that targeting effect from resolving on that target. Uh, this is different to something like Yu-Gi-Oh, where once something's been targeted, even if you make it untargetable in response, then that targeting effect still goes through. In Final Fantasy, it doesn't. It does become an illegal target when the targeting effect tries to resolve. Now, the Sid High wins. This is an auto ability. 
So Sid Highwind has to actually be in play when the forward breaks to cause them to mill. Although, if the uh, Sid Highwind crashes with the forward, so uh, he say the 8k battles another 8k and they both break in combat, uh, he does see that forward go to the break zone and still make the mill even though he's going to the break zone as well. However, if you, for example, the 5k battles that 8k, so the 5k dies, that 8k lives, but then later in the turn you kill the 8k, you won't get to mill because Sid Highwind isn't there, his auto ability won't trigger to make the mill. Now Silver Fairy, again, just targeting mechanics, if the target becomes illegal, so it gets removed, for example, then you won't get the extra ability, so in Silver case you won't gain 1000 pound only 4s, or in Fairy's case you won't get the draw card, if the target's not there anymore. Uh, now the Chocobos. If you, they declare a party attack, their auto ability triggers, it is an auto ability. Now if you remove Chocobo in response, then the other party members won't get the buff, because when Chocobo's ability resolves, they are no longer forming a party with Chocobo, because Chocobo is not there. However, if you remove the other party members, Chocobo will still buff itself, because that's still part of its effect, it buffs itself and also buffs forwards at a party member. So it doesn't actually have to be in a party once its ability triggers to buff itself, however the party members do have to be in a party with Chocobo when it resolves. Uh, Bart's has all the jobs, it's a kind of funny text. It just means that while he's in play, uh, he any cards that affect certain jobs, like say standard unit or like ninja or whatever, will affect Bart's as well. Of course, just remember it's only while he's in play, not while he's in break zone, deck, hand or anything like that. So you can't search him out with like a, a Bran or something like that. You can't bring him back from the break zone with something that says bring back a certain job. But yeah, it's only active while he's in play. Now he stole it, it's the same as Furion, but I just want to emphasize it. The ability which is pay one wind, choose a four, deal 1,000 damage. You can't discard one wind card to use that ability twice or to deal 2,000 damage. Because even though it's the same ability, you still have to activate it separately. So once you activate it once, you pay the cost by discarding a card, then the extra CP disappears. Next time you activate it, you have to generate more CP somehow. Now Yuffie's Bloodfest. Abilities that divide damage among targets, you decide how to divide that damage at activation. And also, you have to deal at least 1,000 to each target. So, if you want to deal 6,000 something, you should only choose that as your only target, because it does say choose up to 3. Uh, now, Mystic and Lulu. Costs have to be paid with your own cards. So even though these don't specify the backup has to be your own, it does have to be your own. Also, I want to point out that Mystic's ability is an action ability. There is a colon there, even though it's sometimes hard to, hard to see. And so that means it will be stopped by Emperor, so both of these can't be used under Emperor. Now Black Belt and Golem, this is an errata. So the correct text is on the screen here, it says choose one blocking forward, or if it is blocking. Uh, the old first wave text says blocked, choose a blocked forward, or if it is blocked, and that is wrong. So this text is correct, uh, even if you have the old text, it still works as blocking. Uh, Kamari is a very funny guy, Ronzo Rage is very interesting. Um, where it says you can use this ability without paying cost once, that's referring to the ability you steal, not Ronzo Rage itself. Secondly, if you target a forward with multiple special abilities, you gain a copy of each of its special abilities. So if you were to copy Legend of the Cloud, for example, you get to use both Omni Slash and Meteor Rain once that turn for free. Thirdly, you can steal more than one copy of abilities. So if you were to use this ability twice on Cloud, you would get two instances of Omni Slash and two instances of Meteor Rain to use. Uh, lastly, if the special ability uses it, that forward's name in its text, uh, basically Kamari's name replaces that name. Because when a card uses its own name in its text, it actually literally translates to this card. So if Kamari steals Ultimisha's ability, for example, which says freeze all the forwards other than Ultimisha, when he uses it, it's treated as freeze all the forwards other than Kamari. Now, regarding Kefka, during the end phase, neither player can use special abilities, action abilities, or summons. Auto abilities can still trigger, but essentially players can't respond to those. So if a forward uh, breaking in the end phase due to Kefka triggers some auto abilities, neither player will be able to respond to those abilities. So as an example, if Golbez breaks due to Kefka in the end phase, it won't be able to be snake bitten by seven because you can't respond to that auto ability with snake bite during the end phase. Uh, also, the delayed auto ability, which attempts to break the forward, it triggers before this turn or until end of turn effects wear off. So Titan or Sabin's ability, for example, will be able to protect a forward from breaking due to Kafka. Now, Seraphie doesn't say choose. So 
the forward you get back is decided at resolution, and both players decide that at resolution. Uh, also, you don't have to both have a forward in your break zone to trigger this ability, so you can have a forward and your opponent cannot have a forward and you'll still get to get one back. Uh, also, because both players select resolution, uh, the uh, turn player selects first. So the non-turn player will know which forward uh, their opponent is selecting before they select their own forward. And uh, that's also especially relevant with Seraphy. Because it's an EX, it can trigger during your opponent's turn, which means they will actually have to select first, which benefits you in that case. Now, Delita is auto ability. It looks kind of like a like an additional cost or like a sacrifice type thing, but it's not at all. It's actually just a normal break effect like Odin or whatever, but you can only choose your own cards. Now, that just means that if you have a card, for example, that can't be broken, so something like Sid Woff, you can just play a Delita, target that card, and that's all good. Delita will attempt to play, nothing happens. Um, if you break the card in response to Delita's ability, so it leaves the field, then that's also fine. So like you can play Delita, target your Devout, and then in response, break Devout, bring back a forward, and then Delita's target's not there, it fizzles, but whatever. Uh, now, North Sign Striker, special ability. The If Delita gets removed in response to that, then the forward won't break, because it's no longer blocking Delita, because she's not in play anymore. Now, Prish and Gilgamesh both have an ability which doubles their power. And double its power literally translates to gain its current power. So, we we'll use Prish as an, as an example. Say it blocks a forward, gains 4,000 power. You can let that resolve and then activate a special ability. Now, when that resolves, it'll see her power is 12k and say, okay, gain 12k. So then she'll go to 24k. And then if she blocks again, she'll gain another 4,000 from her auto ability and go to 28k. And Gilgamesh and Kate Sith, removing the top card of your deck or revealing it happens at resolution. So at the time that either player can respond to these abilities, they won't actually know whether it's going to whiff or not. Now Golbez, where it says their auto abilities will not trigger, that's only referring to enter abilities. So abilities that will trigger when those walls enter. So something like Seraphy, for example, won't trigger if it's brought up by Golbez. However, something like Mystic Knight, which has an effect when it's sent to the break zone, that will still trigger even if that fold was brought out by Golbez. Now, Ultimatia and Guy, this interaction is interesting. Uh, Guy does actually enter dull if Ultimatia is active. That's because Ultimatia is a field ability that kind of changes the rules. Um, it actually just means that the forwards just enter dull instead of active. They don't actually get dulled by Ultimatia. So that's why Guy says it cannot become dull by your opponent's summons abilities. In this case, it's not becoming dull, it just enters already dull. Now, just like Seraphy, because it doesn't say choose, both players select which forward to keep at resolution of Cloud of Darkness, not when it activates. Also, again, turn player selects first, which will of course usually be the player that played Cloud of Darkness. Now, Gordon doesn't work with Minwoo the way you would hope it does. Uh, because again, Minwu apply, uh, checks after all damage modifiers are applied, and Gordon is a damage multiplier. So if he's about to take a 3k damage, for example, and his ability is active, then his ability will see the 3k, reduce it to zero, and then Minwu will check and not doing it, do anything. Um, but of course, that will still consume the next damage part of Gordon's ability. Uh, Cecil, Lightning Rod type abilities. Um, if possible is the key term, so obviously something like Odin 4 won't have to choose Cecil because it can't, because he costs 5. Um, it has to be a legal target. If more than one ability is forcing something to target, and the, both those things are a legal target, then the person using the effect, the targeting effect, gets to choose which one they target out of the options, the lightning rod options. If a summoner ability chooses multiple targets, like for example Bahamut, then it only has to choose Cecil as one of the targets. As long as it chooses him as one of the targets, it can choose any other lethal target. Because once it, he is one of the targets, then he is no longer possible to be targeted as the others. Because obviously those kind of abilities can't target the same, same card twice. Titus's Blitz Ace, it basically changes the rules for the turn. It basically changes uh, his maximum attacks from 1 to your damage. So the main thing is, if you take damage after his ability resolves, you do actually gain the extra attack. So you could use something, you could resolve Blitz Ace, attack with him, how many times you're allowed to, and then for example use Fusoya 
take an additional damage from Fasoya and then be able to use that extra attack. Uh, Knight. This is another party type thing. Um, it doesn't protect itself. Uh, so it, when it says the forward's forming a party with Knight, it means all the other forwards, not Knight itself. Unless, of course, it's partied with another Knight. In that case, then they will protect each other. But yeah. Uh, Minwu. Now, we've already talked about this quite a bit. Again, it uh, checks the damage after all damage modifiers are applied. And it also checks each damage packet individually. So even if there's a bunch of abilities stacked up that do certain amounts of damage, if any of those don't do enough, then that will get cancelled out. So something like Ishtola, for example, if you've targeted something with Ishtola's ability four times to deal 4k damage, even if it's got 4k power, Minwu will block every single one of those damage packets because they're separate packets. Uh, Yuna H's ability when a character is filled to the break zone and you may move from the game instead. That is a field ability. It It's kind of misleading because it says when something happens, do something, it looks like an auto ability. But because it says instead, that's a replacement effect and replacement effects are field abilities. So Yuna's ability is basically applying constantly, even though there's an option involved with it. Uh, that also means that EXs, for example, if something gets broken by an EX, you can still remove it with Yuna because it's a field ability, it's not an auto ability, so you're not responding to the EX. Um, yeah, just keep that in mind. That is a field ability, not an auto ability. Uh, Onion Knight. You can play the same copy that returned itself with its ability. So you can, you know, activate its ability, tap Bouncer, and then play that same Onion Knight, and it will be treated as a new copy of Onion Knight. Uh, cloud, Legendary Cloud. Now this is a uh, generic kind of brave mechanics, but um, this Cloud was the, kind of the first example of this. You have a brave forward with a dull ability, like in this case both of his abilities. Uh, you can actually attack with it, and because it's still active, because it's brave, you can respond to your own attack with the dull ability, so you could use Omni Slash in response to your own attack for example. He will dull from that, but he'll still be attacking, because dulling and already attacking forward won't stop the attack. So yeah, you can kind of use that, to, for example, you could remove a blocker before it gets a chance to block him. Uh, Bahamut Fury's discard happens at resolution. So when either player has a chance to respond to Bahamut Fury, they don't know whether you're going to discard or not. And of course, if something does change about the forward, so say you target a 5k forward, and then they use something to buff it by 2k, then you can be like, well, now I'll discard, do the extra 2k. Sid Reigns and Rigged here. These are different to Sid Highwind. Um, they are not an auto ability. Well, they are auto abilities, but the additional effect is a delayed auto ability that they apply to that forward. And so they don't actually have to be in play when that forward goes to the break zone to trigger that extra effect. So in the case of Sid Reigns, you could play him, target a forward, uh, he dies, whatever. Later that turn, that forward breaks, they will still have to discard a card. Interestingly, you could say, play a Sid Reigns. If you use something like Time Mage, the, the Flicker one from Opus 3, to like, you know, send him out of play and bring him back, target the same forward again, you'll deal another 4k, apply another um, delayed order ability to it, and then if it breaks, they'll have to discard two cards, which is kind of cool. And Rig Deal works the same. Uh, Pain's ability that checks characters in play, it has to, to trigger, those characters have to be in play at activation, and also to resolve, the character has to be in play when it resolves. So the character has to be in play when it activates and resolves to get the benefit. So if you were to say play Pain and use Tama or something, for example, to bring in a unit in response, uh, you still won't get to draw a card because it didn't even trigger in the first place. Uh, Riku, I just want to point out that this stops you targeting it with your own summons and abilities as well, if that effect is active. Uh, Biggs. He will see himself go to the break zone and trigger off himself. So if, if he breaks, he'll still deal the 1k to all the four's opponent controls. Now, Yuna is an auto ability, not an action ability. So there's no summoning sickness. It can trigger the turn she enters play. Uh, the dull, it's not like a cost or anything like that. It's part of the effect. So it happens at resolution if you opt to do it. Uh, that also means that even if she's active when she triggers, if she's no longer active when she tries to resolve, then you won't get to do that effect. Uh, the last thing is, where it says this effect will trigger only once per turn, that is regardless whether you opt to dull and draw or not. So she will trigger on the first summon you cast each turn. Even if you don't dull and draw at that time, if you cast a summon later that turn, she won't trigger again. So you actually miss your chance to draw, basically. 
Uh, Waka sets the power of a forward to 1000, or it says its power becomes 1000. Uh, that means the printed power. It, when you set a forward's power to a specific value, in this case 1000, it sets the printed power, which basically means it changes the number in the bottom right hand corner of the card to 1000. The main thing is, that means all buffs, whether they're like uh, passive or like temporary for the turn or whatever, all those still apply to that forward on top of the 1000. So if you target a forward, for example, and that uh, character has Maria, then once Waka resolves, it'll be 2000 power, not 1000, because it'll be the 1000 printed plus the 1000 from Maria. So the, all the buffs and debuffs will still apply on top of whatever the value you change the forward to is. And that's the end. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I know this one's a little bit longer and a little bit more in-depth, but I really wanted to explain the reasons behind these rules and uh, help uh, people who maybe don't understand why things are the way they are. But I hope that's really helpful. And again, if you have any extra questions or anything like that, then feel free to ask me. Like, you can ask me here, you can ask me Echo Chamber, whatever. Um, and I will do an Opus 2 one at some point as well. Probably won't be nearly as long as this. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.